So in the previous videos, I showed you how I made this high surface area, high performing carbon foam. In this video, I show you how I test each of my cells and the results of this particular carbon. With this particular carbon, it's a good idea to wear a face mask because uh, when you're measuring it out, the carbon be can become easily airborne and get up your nose and cause carbon bogies. Uh, now, uh, when I'm testing each carbon, I uh, measure out 0.1 of a gram or 100 milligrams, if you like, and you can see just how much volume there is uh, to this particular carbon. So what I'm doing when I'm testing a carbon is to use one of these uh, medicine bottles or something like that uh, as a tester pot. And we put, uh, what I do is I put in my 0.1 millig, my sorry, 0 0.1 of a gram of uh, the carbon in there and um, what we're going to do is uh, measure out uh, 20 mils of deionized water we put that in with the carbon uh, put the lid on give it a nice little mix and what I do is as a binder I just use I've got some uh, polyvinyl alcohol in here and uh, I put in a couple of drops of that in there which equates to about 5 to 10% by weight of binder to the carbon that I'm uh, testing. Put the lid back on, give it a nice shake. In Great Blue Peter tradition, here's one I prepared earlier. So give that a good shake and then what I do uh, is I use a 1mm plastic pipette, so you can get a whole load of these quite cheaply on eBay and uh, I'm going to pipette one mil of my ink which I've now made uh, onto the graph oil and that one milliliter will equate to five milligrams of um, of the carbon of my active material. What I do is I cut a couple of strips of graph oil. Uh, I bought a whole load from America actually, uh, is how I got hold of uh, the stuff. Works out cheaper if you buy a big load of it, but of course we'll need a bit of money up front for it. So I have uh, two strips of graph oil here and put the ink onto the uh, graph oil here and it'll probably equate to about three square centimetres. So what I'm going to do is take out one mil of this So we've basically you've got one mil in here, which equates to five milligrams. So we're going to put half a mil on this electrode. I've already heated these up a little bit, so it will dry a lot quicker. So we're just painting that on there. So one thing, great thing I'd like about the um, this carbon is that it produces such a nice fine ink. It's one of the many reasons why I like it, and uh, paints on really nicely. So there we go, and uh, we'll just leave that to dry, and then we can test it. Okay, so there are my electrodes. Nice thin layer on there. So I'm going to show you how I assemble a test cell. Uh, what, what I do is try to keep everything else the same. If you want to uh, make comparisons between different carbons, um, I keep to a um, standard electrolyte, a fairly generic, decent, uh, aqueous um, electrolyte, sodium sulfate, one molar solution. And what I do, um, what I add to that is some of this stuff which is a uh, Triton X100 surfactant. I put in literally just a tiny drop of that um, in the electrolyte. What that does is just help to wet the carbon so that it allows, um, because the carbons are often a little bit hydrophobic, um, it just helps uh, to uh, allow the electrolyte to get into all of the little nooks and crannies in the, in the carbon. And the other thing that I like to uh, keep the same is the separator. This is just an ordinary bit of uh, coffee filter paper, which I find works pretty well. 
Also, obviously, you keep the um, current collectors the same, the, the graph oil as well. And what we do is we charge this to 1.6 volts. I usually find if you try to charge it at 1.8 or above, it's going to. Um, I find that the cell starts to fail after about uh, 10 charges and discharges. What we do um, to hold it all together is um, use a glass slide, a Microsoft, a Microsoft micro, microscope glass slide. So what I do is I put the electrode on top there, put the separator on here, get it all lined up and of course this is a symmetric supercapacitor so you basically have exactly the same on the other electrode once we try and line it up so it's right above the other one press that down there get another glass slide should have one here somewhere place that on top now hold that all together with one of these clips. In fact, three of them all together. Just applies a nice bit of pressure on there so there's good contact between the carbon and the current collector. What I do is I just add a bit more electrolyte in there once it's all together. Just helps to soak it all in. That's all you should need. So we'll just place that on there and then what I do, um, I'll show you this box in a moment, but basically it has the um, uh, charge and discharge on it. But what I uh, find useful um, is using one of these paper clips. Uh, these are metal paper clips, they've got good conductivity on them and uh, you can easily solder um, a lead onto there and I find that better than using crocodile clips. So I'll just try and line that up there. That's going to be my negative. Line the positive one over here. Put that onto there. We're just going to leave that the electrolyte to soak in a little bit, and then we'll uh, charge it up. So to help with testing, I built this little uh, box here and we get the uh, electricity supply through here we put the two cells the cell you're going to test on these uh, two connectors there and uh, we've got a little electric motor here which uh, I got from uh, a very small drone that uh, I didn't want anymore so got a small motor out of that and uh, we've got a switch here which flicks between either the motor load or switch the other way to a 270 ohm resistance if we wanted to measure capacitance and uh, we've got a, a switch here for charge and discharge and a couple of leads here that uh, leads to the voltmeter that reads the volts. So we've got the power supply on here, got it at 1.5, 1.6 volts and uh, here you'll see the current draw and uh, so let's give it a charge. Okay, so we've been charging it up for a while and you've got to bear in mind that this cell is 5 milligrams of active material on about 3 square centimetres, somewhere around there on the graph oil. And uh, you can see how uh, flat, or how thin I should say, the layer of carbon that was on the electrode. So, um, we've been charging it for a few minutes and uh, you can see here the volts, 1.6 volts and the, forget about the minus there, it's just down to polarity um, it's drawing 3.8 uh, milliamps still at the moment and here we'll, uh, we'll time it here on this timer on my phone so what we're going to do is we're going to um, have the little electric motor as the load uh, so that we can calculate uh, from this we can make some guesstimate as to what the watt hours per kilogram uh, this cell will produce. So basically by 
keeping uh, the amount of carbon the same, keeping the electrolyte the same, and the separator the same, the electrodes, current collectors uh, the same, um, then you can give you a good idea, a good comparison between the different carbons. So it's been charging uh, for a while, so let's uh, charge it and time it. See the milliamp draw there. So it lasted about eight seconds. So from watching back that video, I made a calculation of seven watt hours per kilogram of the active material. Now, of course, you can watch back that video yourself and uh, make your own calculations and see whether my maths is up to scratch. Now, seven watt hours per kilogram of active material is quite good. It's nowhere near Robert Murray Smith territory, uh, but it's quite good when you consider that it's a water-based electrolyte. Uh, we're only charging it to 1.6 volts, and it's just a basic symmetric uh, supercapacitor. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I want to do is to improve the performance and uh, get that up to perhaps 20 or 25 watt hours per kilogram. Uh, now the way I feel that I can realistically try to do that is by uh, making it an asymmetric supercapacitor by uh, turning one of the well having a metal oxide in one of the electrodes. <clears throat> Now, I'm probably going to go with uh, manganese dioxide because that's probably the one that I've had quite a bit of success with. There's a really good video that I used that Rob showed us on how to make manganese dioxide involving graphene oxide, which helps make it more conductive and stops the manganese dioxide from crumbling uh, too much. So uh, using that, I found, was uh, was really good. Now. Uh, there is another website um, link that I've given, nature.com, which is a really good website if you want to look up um, free scientific papers. And there's one in particular that um, talked about or, or investigated increasing the voltage potential window of electro aqueous electrolytes. Um, because the theoretical limit apparently is 1.23 volts. But we know we can get it up higher. That's because we're using um, carbon electrodes. They um, the experiment. They uh, looked into all of this, and they managed to um, produce an elect aqueous electrolyte which went above three volts. But it involved using a family of salts that are quite expensive and not very nice. So I didn't want to go down that route. However, they did sh um, show an experiment where they managed to, uh, one instance where they managed to use manganese dioxide as the anode, a carbon on the um, cathode. And they used potassium nitrate uh, as the electrolyte, and they managed to get that up to two volts. So that's what I'm going to try next. So by having uh, the manganese dioxide and getting up to two volts will hopefully really help make a big difference on the performance of the supercapacitor. <clears throat> now I have a bit of a problem with um, the carbon that I've just showed you with the sugar foam carbon in that if I wanted to make a kilogram of the stuff that's an awful lot of fuming in the shed and it's an awful lot of zinc nitrate. So I'm basically thinking of um, combining that carbon with other carbons. Um, now the next best carbon that I've been able to produce is uh, from cellulose um, or from and the best kind of cellulose fibre that I've been able to carbonise is hemp. Uh, this is described as a hank of hemp uh, online and they used it years ago to make um, rope. I'm assuming it's the same hemp fibre that uh, Rob uh, showed us and had a lot of success with. And the second best, sorry, the third best carbon, a, a close third I would say, I used a uh, kitchen roll. So basically the, it's just basically cellulose, isn't it? And um, or using cotton is also a good a form of uh, cellulose, cellulose uh, fibres. Now, Rob used a process called hydrothermal carbonisation, uh, which I'm not keen on doing because it only produces a small amount and there's also the added danger of the thing exploding. So the next best thing, or I thought the next best thing to do, was to chop up the, uh, the hemp fibre or your kitchen roll and put it in the oven uh, in a, a cooking dish or something like that with a lid on and stick it in the oven at about 150 degrees 
stick it in the oven for overnight, up to 24 hours. Um, then cook it for another <clears throat> 12 to 16 hours at 250 degrees. So you're really carbonizing it at low temperatures over a long period of time. So it's really gentle, so you're helping, helping to keep the structure of the um, cellulose fibres, um, which is what you want. Then what I did is I put it in my kiln with the same setup of um, that we use with the sugar foam carbon, um, putting a loose lid on it, making sure there's not too much air getting in, uh, using um, the charcoal briquettes. And carbonise at 400 degrees for about another three or four hours. Hours. Then what I did is I uh, put the kiln up to about 1100 degrees and the time it takes for your kiln to get up to that temperature is, is about what I left it to. And you, once it's got up to 1100 degrees you switch it off and let it cool overnight. Now there's a, another website I've, I found really useful and I've given the link down in the description below and it talks about how um, uh, carbonising biomass. Now of course when we're carbonising things like this, this is basically biomass material. Um, there is, I have tried um, hazelnut shells, I've also, which was quite good, and also some leaves and other biomass type materials. There's a whole host of organic biomass materials that you can experiment with of course. But it's a really good um, website that gives you a guide on not only carbonising but also um, activation as well. You can dramatically improve the performance by using activated um, salts. Um, the two main ones are potassium hydroxide, which is very caustic, so you have to be a little bit careful with it, and uh, also uh, zinc chloride. I use uh, potassium hy hy hydroxide. What you have to do after you've carbonized it is to weigh your carbon and usually with potassium hydroxide it's about a ratio by weight about one to three so one of your carbon three of the potassium hydroxide um, what i did was uh, i used a pestle and mortar put the carbon in there and uh, mixed it with the um, potassium hydroxide and then uh, we put it back in the kiln now i can't uh, i don't use graphite crucibles because I found that it um, cracks them so instead I have to use a stainless steel uh, crucible. I incidentally put a bit of graph oil around the uh, a stainless steel crucible to stop it from splintering around the edge and um, I heated it in my kiln to around about 700 to 800 degrees to, for about an hour um, and that activates the carbon. Of course then once it's cooled down you wash it all through, um, maybe put it in a, in a slightly acidic bath to give it a bit of a wash and um, maybe put it in your sonicator. Get it to a neutral pH, get it all washed out and dry it and there's your carbon. So then I could dry mix that with the sugar foam carbon. That's what I'm planning to, to do when I build my device. There's lots of other things I still need to work on, the electrolyte, the binder system, current collectors. I don't want to use graph oil as current collectors because apparently they swell in a, an aqueous electrolyte over time. So uh, if I, those are the other things that I'm going to be working on. If I find anything useful that I think might help other people, I will show you those, uh, those videos. I hope you found this uh, interesting and thank you very much for watching.